What is a woman? Some people say that it's somebody who's female. Others say that it's someone that presents as one. And to the people that are currently hating on me, they say a woman is simply anyone that identifies as one. And over the last three years, I've had all three of these different views, and now I don't believe in any of them. <laughs> now I think of it very differently, and I think I found the way to connect all women, trans and not trans, to understand each other's experiences. Here's where I'm at with all this. Being a man or a woman is not an identity. It's an experience. We experience a gender in four different ways. Mentally, physically, emotionally, socially. Someone who was born male that has gender dysphoria and mentally aligns with being a woman but hasn't physically or socially transitioned only has one of those four components. And to me, suggesting that that is all being a woman is is invalidating to women that have two, three, or even four out of four. But the same goes for the other side as well. Someone saying that trans women that have gender dysphoria aren't experiencing womanhood in any sense of the word is also untrue. They have that mental aspect, the one-fourth, that usually leads to them transitioning in the first place. Woman has to have a definition. There has to be something around that where people can anchor themselves into the idea of what a woman is. Not every single trans woman is going to hit that magical marker of being recognized as a woman, but that does not mean that it should be thrown away just to appease a particular group of people. That's simply not fair and it's not reasonable. A lot of trans women like myself can go out and be considered as women because we generally look like women, like we act like women, we are seen by people around the world as being women. There is no need to redefine anything about being a woman or act as though it's some sort of magical void that only requires people to say that they are women in order to hit it. If that is the case, then transitioning as a trans woman is completely pointless. There's no need for us to do anything. And as a result, that just lets us suffer in our dysphoria. We need to have a definition of what there is to be a woman if we are to transition to be women. We, if we're just seen as women, then that's perfectly fine. We try and fit it as much as we can. We do not try and tear it down. The defining feature of being trans is gender dysphoria. It's not some kind of wonderful ideological identity thing, which is what radical trans activists have flippantly and quite damagingly painted it as. It is a condition that causes huge distress to people who suffer from it, which is why trans trenders are so damn disrespectful. They have no clue and just want attention. So as such, there is nothing so blatantly disrespectful to women and to trans women than some bloke who makes zero attempt to present as female, insisting on being referred to as a woman, demanding access to women-only spaces, and then calling anyone who questions him a bigot. It is a slap in the face to trans women who do go to all the effort of at least attempting to live and present as a woman, even if they haven't been able to have hormones or surgeries yet. The word woman used to just be the casual word for adult human female, but as the concept of gender identity outside of sex became more prevalent um, and commonplace in conversations, the word woman sort of lost its meaning and became this descriptionless label that pretty much anyone could ascribe to themselves if they felt like it. I'm the perfect trifecta of difficultness being lesbian, black, and trans. The most difficult of the three, honestly, is being lesbian. Trans is like right after that. And the reason I say that is because we aren't heard. We're never a topic of conversation. We're never a part of the conversation. And where trans comes into play is for a person such as Alex Drummond, who has literally gone through none of the transitional phase of being a trans woman, except for the fact that they just are declaring that they are a trans woman, to identify as a lesbian. That's really offensive to me and to other lesbians. If you have literally no secondary sex characteristics of a female, then how can you consider yourself a lesbian? And how can you consider yourself a trans woman? The fact that you can present as male and identify as a trans woman and then declare yourself a lesbian. Like, that is absolutely absurd, guys. For someone to say that there's something with literally none of the experience and none of the parts and none of the transitional processes is offensive. Not to mention how dismissive it is of biological women, as if our discomfort at seeing people who look very much like men waltzing through the doors of our change rooms or our bathroom is linked to bigotry and that we need to suck it up for the sake of people's feelings. Listen, as a psychologist, I don't really care how you present. I don't care how you identify. It's not my place to judge. It's not my experience. 
But when trans women make the choice to present with overtly masculine features, when they make that choice, I have to question why. So if we set aside all the medical reasons why that might happen, there are a few psychological reasons that come to mind. First, it might be a comfort thing, like having that comfort blanket when you're a kid. Maybe you're stepping into your new self and this is very exciting, but you want to retain a little part of that old you when you've always had a beard and it's just the way it is. Another reason might be fear. Fear of not being able to be accepted as a NATO woman. And in fact, we know this is the case with Alex Drummond because she gave an interview to BuzzFeed where she said, I was aware that I was unlikely to ever pass as a NATO female. So I wanted to do is see if I could create another space. And I did it in a very radical way. I'm Kitty Demure, drag queen. I am not a trans woman. I am not a biological woman. I am a gay man who dresses up as a woman for entertainment. It really bothers me when I see that I actually work harder at being a woman than some trans women do. I think you should always present as the sex that you claim to be. I don't understand why you wouldn't. I don't understand why you'd want to continue looking like a man but call yourself a woman. And when you do that, you don't garner the respect from society. But it seems to be quite interesting that those who push these kinds of narratives are the ones who are least impacted by the idea of women being completely dismantled anyway. You're looking at men who are just trying to be good trans allies, but also biological women who are non-binary, who have absolutely no intention of ever being considered as women, but they will still try and push that almost as a way of deconstructing what gender is. And then you have the trans women who are completely lazy and think it's their role, their job to redefine woman, that by growing a massive beard and looking like a big burly bloke, they are somehow queering the agenda when it comes to being a woman. Like that makes any kind of sense, like that is going to help us be accepted in society. We know what a woman is. In general, a woman is a biological adult human female. Woman denotes a range of experiences as intrinsic to someone who lives and presents as a woman. You can't just look like a man and then claim to be a woman and expect people to take you seriously. That's nuts. There are many layers of womanhood and they cannot be co-opted by opportunists. Now, on the subject of privilege, I don't actually believe men are inherently privileged. There are pros and cons of being perceived as both a man or a woman, and men, of course, have their own issues inherent to them to deal with, just as women do. But certainly, nobody is entitled to be seen as a woman just because they want to be seen that way. There is a great deal more to being a woman than just slapping on the label or a frock whenever you feel like it. Interesting, because like I often ask trans people and pe people in the queer community what they think the difference is between a man or a woman or what a woman is or what a man is and I don't really get a lot of quick comfortable answers. If you say that the difference is biological sex then obviously you invalidate all trans people and if you say that the difference is something like that men are masculine and women are feminine then you're invalidating all masculine women and feminine men. As a trans woman with overly masculine features, you're not gonna be treated the same way I am as a cis woman. You're also not gonna have the same experience as a trans woman who chooses to present in a more feminine way like Blair White or Rose of Dawn. If you claim to be a woman, well then you better look like a woman or at least try to. One of my concerns is that if we start to legally change the definition of what a woman is, then it could start to backtrack the progress that female people have made for themselves legally. And that's why I think it's important to protect female people's reality from being erased, to protect their right to female-only spaces, um, to ensure that sex-based statistics are recorded accurately. Female people around the world, especially in other parts of the world, are not asked what their gender identity is before having their clitoris cut off or before being denied access to education. Women can't escape these things. These experiences are not something that can be shared by male people simply by identifying alongside them at will. With all of this said, I acknowledge that neurodiversity and sex dysphoria are a real thing. It, it's, it seems to be a mental affliction that I honestly would not wish on anyone. And I know there's no cure for it, but the way we treat it is through 
surgeries and hormones that would allow a person's body to mimic the appearance and function of the opposite sex in order to reduce depression, anxiety, risks of suicide, etc. Um, and these people deserve our and need our understanding and respect and our help. I will see you guys back here in a few days with more amazing, rational, logical LGBT content. Until then, I love you, love yourselves. Bye.